Would you like to take a tour of my woodland shady garden? There was just scrappy grass 13 years ago when we moved in. I put this arbor in in part to expand the size of the garden by drawing the eye up, but also for privacy from my next door neighbor. Stick around and I'll show you more tips and tricks from my garden. I'm Susie Dingle, writer, garden coach, and landscape designer, bringing you information and inspiration so you can better enjoy, utilize, and improve your own outdoor space. Let's get on with the tour. This space sits behind our house and it's a narrow rectangular area, about 18 feet by roughly 40. The light shifts throughout the day and each part of it gets a small amount of sun, but none of it gets full sun the entire time. But it does create some interesting dappled light and especially in the afternoon because the neighbor's trees block much of the light, but some of it still passes through. The area is surrounded on three sides by buildings. So it was almost a courtyard. And by adding the arbor, essentially it became a courtyard, which has an inherent sense of privacy. The arbor is wide and long, so much so that you can easily walk underneath it and even put a bench underneath it as well. The vines growing on it soften the hard edges of the border, kind of blurring the line between our garden and the neighbor's garden. And it gives the impression that our garden continues beyond the fence. On one side is an akebia vine, which is semi-evergreen, mixed in with a clematis montana that has beautiful pink fragrant flowers on it this time of the year. The other end, near the main entrance to the garden, has two kiwi vines, a male and a female, growing there. Even if that vine never gives a single fruit, I love the fuzzy red vines and the leaves, the size of them and the dramatic impression that they have. They're also fun to use in floral projects. The cascading vines and the dreamy muted colors and textures really adds to the romantic nature of this garden. And although I love many different types of gardens, this style is nearest to my heart and probably best described as cottage core. It's unforced, weathered, resilient, productive, yielding, nurturing. It's a microcosm of nature. Each of the main feature nudges slightly into the adjacent area, only so far as to subtly intermingle. The circular patio runs under the arbor and the arbor widens midway, projecting into the flower bed. The main path runs beyond the garden in both directions, which capitalizes on the length, again expanding the space. The two ends disappear into two distinctly different areas. One is sunnier, and then the other one is very dark and mysterious, and both of them look like they go on for quite a long way. The vines hanging on the arbor also hide parts of the path, which increases the mystery and the intrigue. The patio is an open, expansive space acting as negative space so that the other elements can shine. The circular pavers radiate outward like a starburst 
and that alone visually expands the area. The woodland strawberry softens the stone, creeping in and again, making the flower bed and the patio mingle just a little. Between the patio and the wall is a very narrow strip that was perfect for this lavender, which is Intermedia Grosso, and also a Rosa Glocco, which is grown primarily for the gray foliage, although it does get very pretty pink flowers. And in the urn is a dogwood tree that I grew from a seedling that appeared on our property. I've kept the seeding on the patio very sparse so to preserve that open area where one can imagine having a picnic or dance or sleep underneath the stars. Against the house is a diminutive sized deck which is perfect just to lie down on and enjoy the view of the sky. I've kept the seating in the garden in general to a minimum. On the patio under this curtain of Clematis Montana is a child-sized mermaid stool. It tricks the eye into thinking that the surrounding area is larger and taller than it really is. On the other deck where you first come into the garden, there is a small wrought iron settee and chair. That's really the perfect place to perch and take in the whole garden. I like to sit there and watch the squirrels or my cat, Annie, run along the arbor or the fence. The ever-shifting patterns of light and shadow are a key feature in this small space. They interact with the garden, providing a multitude of experiences on any given day. This urn is painted black inside and filled with water, and I'm always astounded at how beautifully it captures the scene above even in full color. This bird bath that I've had for decades also holds still unmoving water. And I believe both of these water features provide a moment of quiet reflection. The combination of the buildings and arbor and the neighbor's trees all work together to draw the eye up and essentially frame the sky. And this is my favorite view, no matter what time of the year it is. I like to gaze skyward and I find that it always lifts my spirit and it's very relaxing. This flower bed area was originally intended to hold a small wooden hot tub and perhaps it will one day but until then I'm happy to just take footpaths and admire the different plants the columbine later there will be hydrangeas also right now we have these forget-me-nots and Solomon seal and the very fragrant lily of the valley I really can't imagine giving up this flower bed after having it for so long now and it brings me such joy and joy to the garden by attracting the hummingbirds and the bees and animals of all kinds, little critters that skitter through. And of course, my cat that was originally attracted to this garden, I believe, as, as a stray and then we took her in. I love how this drift of columbine flowers 
just seems to be floating in mid-air like a cloud above the flower bed. This little footpath cuts through the flower garden and gives me access to the host bib and also to be able to get into the center of the garden for maintenance. I'd like to show you a few more plants that are perfect for the woodland setting. This is a variegated elderberry and it will get about 12 feet tall, but it's very easy to prune up. It's underplanted with geranium macrorhizum. This is sweet Sicily that's going to seed. It smells like licorice and the ferny foliage will last all summer. Here in my dried shade, I find that it's not aggressive. That lush carpet of green is evergreen maidenhair fern, also called Himalayan evergreen fern. I'll provide a link to the video I made specifically about them. This sweet fern is a Japanese painted fern and they come in different colors and patterns. These giant leaves belong to the Blue Angel Hosta and they hold up very well against both slugs and my cat. All of the objects in the garden are subdued in their coloring to create cohesion and also a sense of calm. This seahorse was once part of a larger water feature that was disassembled, which is pretty obvious due to the tube that's coming out of its mouth. When we restored part of the fencing in another area, I couldn't toss this humble gate. So I leaned it up against the fence. I may yet do more to create the illusion of it being a real gate to another garden beyond. Moss covered block steps, a temporary fix that will likely be a permanent solution. I found that using large urns in small spaces can work to make the space feel larger as long as there is some breathing room around it. We're currently in the middle of May, but even in the winter when the garden is resting, there's plenty of greenery to look at and I can always come here and gaze at my favorite garden feature, which is the sky. I hope you enjoyed this tour of my garden. If you did, click the like button. Until next time, I'll be dreaming of you in the garden. Bye!